War. War never changes. Hey there. So, first things first, in case any of you are wondering if I died or something like that, no, it's just for the longest time I've actually been working two jobs at once and, you know, working that much time, I didn't have any time to do up videos. However, I've finally given the one job up now, so I've got a little bit more spare time on my hands. So I thought today I'd do kind of a more fun and more relaxed video and give something back to the community at the same time. We frequently take a look at mods for Warhammer games, but what about Warhammer mods for non-Warhammer games? Well, these are far from a rare occurrence, I thought I'd take a swing at making a pretty fun little package for Fallout 4. On top of that, I figured I'd blend in some actual Warhammer mechanics into this little video too, in the form of some dice rolls. Are you intrigued? If so, keep watching. Wow. So, before we even get started, a friendly warning. This will take some effort to set up on your part, especially if you've never modded Fallout 4 before. If you're looking for the quick and easy way, there's a Warhammer 40k conversion that already exists for Fallout New Vegas that'll actually do way better than our efforts here anyways. And on top of that, New Vegas is also a substantially better game than Fallout 4 is. I'm not debating that point with anyone, it just is. Now, that said, there are some kind of cool wrinkles from doing this in Fallout 4 that aren't possible in New Vegas. Plus, you know, Fallout 4 is the new hotness, so heck, here we are. Anyways, what will you need to actually get started? Well, let's go over the stuff that costs money first, since that'll be a big hurdle for certain folks. You'll need Fallout 4, obviously, as well as all of its DLCs. Then the only other thing you'll need that possibly could cost money is a single six-sided die. So if you have one, hey, you're set, and if you don't have one, you either have to buy one or use an online program that does the same thing. As for the non-paid stuff, first up, go grab yourself Vortex Mod Manager and Fallout 4 Script Extender. After that, I've got a Google document linked down below. Click that, it'll have the list of mods you'll need and the sources because not all of this stuff is available on the Nexus. And then lastly, I'll also have the rule sheets in there for starting a run of your own. And that's where the fun really starts. Now, in theory, yes, you can pick any facets you want and just roleplay it that way, but for a more fun experience, I thoroughly recommend rolling for a character. It'll be a lot more entertaining that way as you have to deal with these stipulations that have been put on you as opposed to just sort of doing what you want. Um, if you are rolling, there's three major categories, gender, race, and class. Gender dictates what uh, certain races are available and certain classes are available, and you can pick it yourself or you can roll for it with odds being male and evens being female. From there, we pick a race, which is probably the incorrect term since there's like four different human options on here. Anyways, I called it race. Roll the die once more and follow that number to that specific listed race for that gender. Each race has some specific stipulations about it, but understand that those may get overridden by the class you end up getting. Once again, pick it yourself if you don't want the RNG, but I really think it's fun to cater your campaign to the dice god's whims. Lastly, we roll for class, which tweaks your race to a much more specific role. Again though, you may also elect to do this yourself, or even during a campaign if you like. Some of the classes will have an additional role associated with them too, which is resolved through obviously one more dice roll. Lastly, while you can simply treat this like a bog standard Fallout run, I also included three different difficulty modifiers with my overwhelming recommendation be to playing on medium. This gives you permadeath without being super over the top cruel about it, and the permadeath is kind of fun because it's interesting to see how far you can take each character before they inevitably get gunned down and die. Anyways, that's my explanation for how it all works. I really hope you find some enjoyment out of it, it took a surprisingly long time to finally write all of this stuff out, there's like a good two dozen pages there. Um, if you did have fun, and if you have some suggestions or you have some additions to put in, please chuck them into the comments so I can add them into the master list so that other people can use your ideas too. Uh, similarly, if you happen to have any modding experience or you've created any assets that could help out here, please get them up and on the Nexus as soon as you can so that others can utilize it for even more character options. Um, but anyways, that's it for the actual explanation side of things. If you want to cut and run from the video at this point, Everything's down in the description, and you won't hurt my feelings for doing so. If you do want to stick around and keep watching, though, I've got a highlight reel of my most recent run just for giggles. You know, have fun and enjoy. As beautiful as the day we met. Uh, this dude is terrified of his wife, or he has an extremely specific fetish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that works. Gorgeous. That looks nice.
Oh yeah, there we go. Blood letter, if the blood letter was a hot yoga mom. I swear, you haven't aged a day since our wedding. Obviously not, Nate. She's a demon, you idiot. Every time I see that face, I fall in love with you all over again. <laughs> what? Not bad. Not bad at all. Alright, so we're a chosen a corn, so we have to pick the brawler background. And then we've got possibly plus, plus two to strength, and we have to take negative one to intelligence, which doesn't leave us much wiggle room in terms of stats. I guess so let's bump down charisma one point we'll take another extra free point in strength and try to try to get some melee damage up and run an ASAP. There's the kind of footage you guys all came here for. Me stripping a bunch of dead corpses on the vain hope that I can produce some armor for myself. The only thing that sucks about being a female when you're playing as the Chaos characters is you don't have access to power armor immediately. I mean, not that I have a power armor frame anyways, but I'm pretty sure there's one nearby if my memory's good. Which, it would have been nice to get armored up ASAP, because you're really vulnerable with the lower stats. Also, holy Christ, that goddamn searchlight is so annoying.
If it seemed like I really jumped ahead forward, it did because I ended up just accidentally, well, maybe not accidentally, I intentionally went and just wiped out a settlement that also had children in it, so I thought maybe don't throw that up on the channel. Hey. Now the rules only say I can't have power armor. It says absolutely nothing about my companions. Therefore, this dude's getting this suit ASAP. You know he's here? Yeah, he's probably the eight foot tall orc shooting at us, you moron. Christ, I gotta be careful. I've had a bunch of characters die in like their opening two minutes because you start out so weak and if you're dead, that's it, it's done. Protect me, minion! this character in like the opening 10 minutes of gameplay that's gonna be embarrassing dude what are you doing turn around oh, finally did you just throw a grenade at someone you're meleeing Yeah, corn's chosen. I can take on a few flies. That's how it's done, boys. Quick, another settlement needs my help. I'll mark it on my map. Well, they just don't even care that I just nailed them in the back of the head with a chain axe. They're just going to politely speak to me after that. They're more chaotic than I am. Got taken out by a single baseball bat swing. Why would you throw a grenade at a corpse? It's already dead. I'm the only one here. 